Welcome learners. This unit is about the Schumpens of Great Nicobar. After going through the unit, you should be able to have a general understanding of the Schumpens of Great Nicobar and knowledge about their life and culture in terms of food habits and social, political and economic organizations. In this video, we shall discuss about the general understanding of the champagnes of Great Nicobar? Classified as a primitive tribal group, along with the four other tribes, the Champagne, unlike the other primitive tribes of the Andaman Islands, are not of Negritu but of Mongoloid stock. Their light yellow brown skins, straight hair, narrow eyes, and stocky built give them a strong resemblance to the people of Myanmar and Indonesia. Like the Jarawa, they are skilled hunter-gatherers, but unlike them, also raise plantations of various crops such as pandanus and lemon and colocasia. They subsist primarily on these plants, wild boar, wild fruits, honey and fish. Like the Jarawa, they are by and large disease-free. Only 50 years down the line, their lands have been occupied, their forests chopped down, their animals hunted and they themselves outnumbered by people from an alien culture. Unlike the major islands of the Andamans and some Nicobar Islands, Great Nicobar was by and large undisturbed by incursions of outsiders until the late 1960s. The Shompin lived in the interior of the island inside the forest and along the rivers. The Nicobaris lived along the coast to the north of the island. The two tribes lived in a kind of armed truce after intermittent skirmishes. A major influx of population started in 1969 with the settlement of several hundred ex-servicemen from the mainland on the southeastern coast of Great Nicobar and a proposal to settle several hundred more on the western coast. Even more damaging, the east-west road, measuring 43 km in length, was constructed through pristine Shompen territory. Thus, a tribal reserve area under the Andaman and Nicobar Protection of Aboriginal Tribes Regulation 1956 was open to outsiders. Shrinking reserve area the reserved area in Great Nicobar, which initially covered the whole island, 1044.54 square kilometer as per the notification dated 2nd April 1957, issued by the Chief Commissioner of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, has been reduced to 853.19 square kilometer. The population of outsiders has been growing steadily since 1969, while the number of the Champagne, which is alarmingly low, has remained stagnant or is shrinking. According to the census, the population of the Champagne was 212 in 1971, 223 in 1981, 131 in 1991. 398 in 2001 and 229 in 2011. According to census 2011, male constitute 61.5% of total population. These figures are of course estimations and discrepancies particularly in the last figure are quite obvious as the Schumpen being forest dwelling, nomadic hunter-gatherers and averse to the entry of others into their settlements do not lend themselves to easy or accurate counting. Several development activities are currently happening in Great Nicobar, all with an inevitable deleterious impact on the Champagne. Some are security related given the strategic location of Great Nicobar almost at the southern end of India and its proximity to many international shipping routes, such activities cannot perhaps be avoided. Three dangers! But 
the three issues that pose the greatest danger to, to the Schumpen are not defense or security related. The burgeoning population of outsiders, the renovation and continued construction of the east-west road through the heart of the Schumpen Reserve, and the free food and other items being given to the Schumpen by the government. Even though Great Nicobar was severely affected by the 2004 tsunami, it does not seem to have had any permanent impact on the number of people who wish to live there. The population today has grown considerably from that in 2001. Apart from the impact on the Champagne, the numbers need to be controlled and reduced from the point of view of the island's carrying capacity. The island's ecology will definitely be destroyed by such large numbers and so will the people who live in harmony with it. The construction and repair of the east-west road is an even greater threat to the Champagne. This road, which had been constructed long ago and abandoned, fell into disrepair and was not used for several decades. Indeed, there was no real need to maintain it since the settlement on the western coast, which the road was supposed to link, never came up. Since the tsunami, however, repair work on a lot of structures was taken up, including the east-west road. Thus, the Schumpen are faced with the renewed danger of incursions into their territory. Moreover, the laborers from the mainland bring with them a totally different culture. Even more worrisome, they bring diseases to which the Schumpen have little or no immunity. Such diseases can spread like an epidemic, as happened some years ago when diarrhea killed a large number of the tribe. But by far, the most damaging activity is the administration's practice of doling out free rations. This has been in operation for some years, but increased after the tsunami, in the mistaken belief that the Schumpen were being protected from hunger and starvation. The Schumpen, who are a totally self-sufficient hunter-gatherer grower people living on wild animals, Fruit, tubers, fish and honey are being given rice and biscuits and alien food products. They are also being given cloth, though the Schompen have an ancient tradition of making cloth out of tree bark, which they wear swathed around their waists. Thus, an insidious culture of dependency is being created, undermining the self-sufficiency of these people. Specialized handling? The issues of the tribes of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands are so different from that of other tribes that it calls for extremely sensitive and specialized handling. Unfortunately, most senior officials in the Andamans and Nicobar come to the islands from the mainland for a brief period and do not have a clue about the approach required for these rare heritage tribes. When there is a conflict between the interests of the few hundred tribal people and that of the few lakh people who have settled there, the administration tends to decide in favor of the larger number. Though such decisions might have a direct and extremely adverse impact on the primitive tribal groups, such officials also resist any kind of sensitization. Unless the administration wakes up to the fact that they have a very uncommon and precious commodity in the form of these heritage primitive tribes, one that needs extremely delicate and sensitive handling, it is more than likely that these few hundred people will in due course disappear. Background information of Champagnes. Champagnes are one of the most primitive tribes of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and constitute one-sixth of its total population. The Shompin tribe is one of the dwindling Mongoloid aborigines and presently it is an ethnic oddity. It is a forest-dwelling tribe inhabiting the Great Nicobar Island which constitutes the home of Shompins. 
However, the island does not provide much clue about the origin of the Champagnes. Probably, they might have migrated several years back from the nearby Malaysian regions and made the Great Nicobar Island their home. Champagnes are semi-nomadic food gatherers and hunters with Stone Age civilization. They live in small groups in the dense interior forests of the island. Being suspicious and shy, they have rejected all contacts with the outside world. However, they are not hostile. They are well built and taller than the Nicobaris. They have slightly dark complexion and their features, especially their noses and jaws, are quite prominent. The term Champagne might be the outcome of the British pronunciation of the Nicobari term Shamhap, meaning one who lives in forests. The Nicobaris call them Shampeham and Champion. Perhaps Champagnes are the last remnants of the Malay race who maintains a separate existence in dense forests and have their primitive culture and own language. Like the great Andamanis and the Onges of the Andaman Islands, the Champagnes are a dying race being ravaged by diseases and a primitive way of life. Among their economic activities related to subsistence, the major ones are hunting, fishing, food gathering and pig rearing. Hunting and fishing are mostly carried out throughout the year, though the 1981 census enumerated their population. Though the 1981 census enumerated their population to be 214, subsequently their number reduced to 134. As an epidemic break of gastroenteritis eliminated nearly 100 individuals. However, their population according to the 2001 census has risen to 395. Till the end of the 19th century, the Nicobar Archipelago remained isolated from all points of view. It was annotated with phrases like the paradise of the pirates or the land of the naked people. This island represents one of the greatest emporia of ethnobotanical wealth, where aboriginal native tribes of ancient culture remain in their virginity. Champagnes are the original inhabitants of the Great Nicobar Island, which is the southernmost island of the Andaman and Nicobar archipelago. The island covers an area of about 1045 square kilometer and is about 55 kilometer long from Murray Point in the north of Indira Point in the south. The island represents a varied natural panorama of Great Nicobar Island. It is covered with virgin lush evergreen dense tropical forests extending from the sea coast to the hilltops. The island occupies a phytogeographical strategic position between the mainland Myanmar and Thailand on the one hand and Sumatra and the Malay Peninsula on the other. The island is highly rugged with narrow flatland along the sea coast and hill ranges running in north-south direction. Five perennial rivers, Alexandra, Dogmar, Amritkaur, Jubilee and Galatia with their tributaries constitute the main drainage system of the island. The soils of the island are loose in texture, poor in drainage and low in moisture retaining capacity. The climate is that of the humid tropics with temperature ranging from 22 degrees centigrade to 32 degrees centigrade with mean relative humidity of about 82%. Annual rainfall in the northern part of island is 3,800 millimeters, while in south it is about 3,000 mm. April is the hottest month of the year. Rainy season begins in April and continues up to December. January to March have more or less dry weather. The island is subjected to gales and cyclonic winds blowing west to east and east to west. The Shompins were the sole occupants of the Great Nicobar Island until the arrival of the settlers. They are entirely dependent on forest resources and sea products for all their needs. In the present work, 
ethnobotanical aspects pertaining to food, medicine, shelter, hunting and canoe making are presented. The champagnes are found to depend on rhizomes, bulbs, tubers, roots and fruits of wild plants present in the surrounding forests. Animal-based diet of the champagnes included several kinds of fishes, turtles, lobsters, prawns, mussels, octopus, wild pigs, eggs of megapod birds and wood insects. The men generally go out for fishing, hunting, food gathering and honey collection. The champagnes like hunting wild pigs in the forests of Great Nicobar Island. They also hunt monkeys, crocodiles, frogs, snakes, birds and lizards. Their fishing and hunting are of the most primitive type. They use harpoons made of pointed iron rods for fishing and hunting turtles and crocodiles. For hunting wild pigs, monitor lizards, snakes and monkeys, they use spears and hatchets. The food collected becomes the property of the whole community and the women usually prepare food for the men. Fruits of Pandanus, Leram, Jones form the staple food. The Chopins use several wild plants for treating various physical ailments. Methods of application are simple as in most cases. The Chopins simply chew a particular plant either raw or at times it is pounded and applied externally. Plant decoction is also used. However, no attention is given to the quantity of plant parts used in the prescription. The Chopins build temporary huts propped on stilts 2 to 6 meters above the ground. Inside the huts, crude mats made from pandanus and cane strips are used and leaves of lea, grandifolia, curs serve as bed sheets, while a piece of bamboo is often used as pillow. The Chopins prepare indigenous dugouts or canoes called horis which are of two types. Small canoes having carrying capacity of two or three persons are used for crossing creeks and rivers. Big canoes having carrying capacity of two to seven persons are used for transportation and fishing in the sea. These canoes which vary in size from six to ten feet are generally fixed with an outrigger for balance and mood using paddles. The Chopins appear to be an intermediate group between the Andamanis, hunter and food gatherers, and the Nicobaris, gardeners and herders. As they combine their food gathering and hunting habits with some gardening and herding as well. The Chopins generally live in places close to a drinking water source and where abundant pandanus fruits are available, which form their staple food. The Indian region with its innumerable tribes and ethnic groups offers ample scope for ethnobotanical studies. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands are the abode of hunter-gatherer nomadic tribes leading a contented life with limited forest resources. The Nicobaris live closer to the coast and are sea dependent, while the Chopins are forest dwellers, thus their lifestyles blend harmoniously with nature and they are considered as eco-friendly people. The Chopins, like many other tribes, suffer from various ailments like malaria, microfilaria, elephantiasis and other fatal diseases. Strangely, no tribal medicines for such diseases exist amongst them. Ironically, these ailments together with lower population of females, low birth rate, high rate of infant mortality, malnutrition have placed the Chopins almost on the verge of extinction. During the last two decades, the Tribal Welfare Directorate of the Andaman and Nicobar Administration and Botanical and Anthropological Surveys of India, Port Blair, are involved in studying and documenting the different dwindling sociocultural, ethnobotanical and historical aspects of the aboriginal tribes of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands respectively. We will continue to discuss in detail 
about the life and culture in terms of food habits and social, political and economic organizations of the champions in the subsequent videos.